Sage is a phenomenal job with lots of tips and tricks, but once you understand it, you'll be healing with the best of them. If you're a beginner or casual player that is hesitant on playing healing classes, I'm going to provide you a practical healing guide from level 1 to end game. This is not a pep talk or encouraging words. This is a step-by-step -step guide in order to build confidence and begin understanding the job as a beginner. These are my personal opinions as always, and if you think something else, great, you do you. This is not an optimal guide for savage or extreme content, but there's plenty of videos out there for that. At the end of this video, I'll be giving specific tips on abilities I like to pair together and how I like to play Sage. As always, we're operating under the intention of being as helpful as possible in terms of healing, and that means DPSing, healing, and providing mitigation and buffs. Without further ado, let's jump into the main tips you need to know. As with all other healers, you're probably going to be healing more, especially with Sage. So make sure that you have your UI set up so you can see your tank and party's health as easily as possible. Always be casting ABC, which is the main theme of all jobs. You do not want to just be standing around. You can be healing, damaging, or dotting enemies. With Sage especially, this is pretty easy because a lot of our abilities are OGCD, so we can be damaging all the time. Gearing is more important now than ever. So with the downscaling, you want to make sure that you have up to date gear in the description. There'll be a how to gear from one to 89 so that you can watch that after this video to keep your pieces of gear up to date. This affects how much healing you do. So it's very important for healers to make sure you're properly geared. Sage, similar to Scholar, has shield GCDs, but what Sage also has is quite a few damage mitigation abilities, so the goal here is to rotate through them easily and effectively. Even though it feels like Sage doesn't have a lot of quick recovery abilities, understanding how these work together can achieve something pretty similar. Because Sage is so brand new and has so many different names for abilities, we're going to breeze through the first few sections of content as you won't be doing this often because we start off at level 70. But you should still understand the abilities, so I will break these down one by one in order as I don't want to confuse you with pairing later abilities with earlier abilities. It's better to understand each one individually. Dosis, which is our single target damage ability. This also triggers our Cardia ability, which we will cover later. Diagnosis, single target heal GCD. GCD meaning just it resets the global cooldown timer. This is important to understand for weaving later on. Cardia. This is a similar mechanic to Dancer's Dance Partner, where we need to apply this to someone, preferably our tank until later on when you get more comfortable. Once you apply this, pretty much all of your damage abilities will heal this teammate. Prognosis. AoE Healing GCD. I honestly rarely, if ever, use this ability at base form. Igero. Your Resurrection, which is kind of funny since they actually changed the word. Physis. Party-wide regen. You're going to be using this one a lot. Flemma. A GCD AoE damage ability on a 45 second cooldown. Keep this on cooldown at all times to increase your DPS output. This also triggers our Cardia ability as well. Now 1 to 29 dungeon pulls are fairly straightforward. You're just going to heal your tank as needed and use Dosis as needed. You don't really have a lot going on here and you can also just use Physis whenever you need some regen or keep that on cooldown. You'll want to be careful though to keep an eye on your tank's health because lower dungeon content pooling can be really difficult for Sage since you don't have a lot of utility like some of the other healers do at this point. Point. Now let's talk about 30 to 50 content. We now have our main ability to make Sage different and that is Eucrasia. This ability augments certain abilities. This will turn your base GCDs into their shield form and doses into your damage over time. It can be a little wonky at first to understand but you'll need this ability a lot so keep it somewhere close and accessible on your hotbars. When you hit Eucrasia, you'll turn Dosis, Diagnosis, and Prognosis into the respective forms of Eucrasian Dosis, your damage over time, Eucrasian Diagnosis, your single target heal and shield, and Eucrasian Prognosis, your AoE heal and shield. Now I'm assuming they did this to help with button bloat as now you have 7 abilities and 4 buttons, which is nice. This may take a minute to get used to, but once it clicks, it's going to be pretty straightforward and pretty intuitive. Soteria is just a 50% buff to your Cardio partner's healing, so if you feel like you need a little extra healing, you can pop this ability to increase your healing effect. 
Icarus, which is your gap closer, which honestly I love to be able to catch up with the tank when they're pooling and or you fall behind. This is super useful. At your next ability, your job gauge now unlocks to which you have Adder's Gall. You can get one every 20 seconds, and that is in and out of battle, which is pretty freaking amazing. Our first job ability is called Druacult. This is a free single target heal OGCD. This will use one stack of Adder's Gall, heal your chosen target, and give you 7% of your MP back, which is 700 MP. At level 46, we finally get our AoE ability, which is Discrasia. This affects your Cardia ability as well. This is a great AoE ability as it's an instant cast, so you can cast it while you're on the move after you applied your dots to each enemy. You have to be pretty close to the tank, so this is where Icarus comes in to catch up and be able to attack as you're running. Last but not least, for level 50, you have Carachol. Now this is a 10% damage mitigation ability that you'll be keeping on cooldown at all times. 10% party wide, not even just for one teammate, but for everyone. So you will prioritize this almost always. And because of such a short cooldown of 30 seconds, sometimes you won't even realize that it's ready again to use. Now that we have all of our abilities to level 50, let's craft a tank pull so you can understand how these all work together. Tank will pull enemy. We will dot each enemy as we run. You can apply Eucrasian Diagnosis here, which is your single target heal and shield. When the tank stops, you're or just about to stop, we can use Carachol. Then we're gonna start spamming our AOE ability Discrasia and maybe throw in Ephesus for a party-wide regen. Now, if you come from a regen healer like Astro or White Mage, then you might notice that you don't have a single target regen. Scholar has the fairy that will continually be healing your party member at random. Most of the time it focuses the tank. With this ability Cardia, you might not feel like you're getting that extra regen because it's not really showing you an on-screen effect, unlike the Scholar's Fairy. But you have to be DPSing with either your AoE ability or dotting or using your single target damage ability. If you are not doing those things and you might just have a few seconds standing around, your tank's health might drop quite quick. I just wanted to make sure to mention it at this part because you might not realize that you're not healing your tank if you have a little downtime or not keeping your GCD timer window rolling. You do have your job ability, Drill Coal at this point, so you can throw out a single target heal if needed. Now we're gonna get into the 50 and above abilities and I'm going to do my best to explain them as simply as possible. Ixachol is your group AoE healing ability OGCD. 30 second cooldown plus gives you MP back so a great way to recover your team's health if multiple people need it. Zo. This basically just buffs a healing GCD, so either Diagnosis or Prognosis. This is actually super great to pair with Eucrasian Diagnosis to put an even bigger heal and shield on the tank, right after he pulls the first mob or right before a boss. Pepsis. This ability removes Eucrasian Diagnosis or Eucrasian Prognosis to heal the party for either 350 or 450. Admittedly, I don't use this ability often only because they have to have a Eucrasian prognosis on them, which is your AoE heal and shield or your single target heal and shield Eucrasian diagnosis. The only time I've had to use this is if I'm between cooldowns for whatever reason and I have to cast a Eucrasian prognosis and then use Pepsis to recover HP quickly for the party. Physis 2. Now this is an important upgrade to Physis as it will buff your subsequent heals so you'll want to cast this ability often as it allows you to heal the tank easier. Torachol. This is our other job ability that will give you a single target heal, 10% damage mitigation, and MP recovery. Now this is important to understand since you have two abilities that have a 10% damage mitigation, you will be able to keep that up on the tank more often. So you'll never want to cast your Bubble, Carachol, or Torachol together as these abilities do not stack. With your new ability Toxicon, you're going to be getting a new job gauge, which is Adder Sting. There is a lot of confusion around this gauge, so let's break it down real quick. The only way to get Adder Sting stacks is when you cast Eucrasian Diagnosis, which is your single target heal and shield, and then it gets broken by an enemy. 
so you will gain some just by casting it on the tank as he's pulling for trash mobs. Another good way to get stacks of this for it to be a DPS gain is to cast Eucrasian Diagnosis on three party members before the boss is pulled as usually in the first 30 seconds there is a room wide attack that will break each of those shields. The reason Toxicon is so good is it allows us to be mobile during a fight and keep DPS uptime as this is a ranged instant cast attack. Now don't just keep spamming Eucrasian Diagnosis just to get Adder Sting stacks as you'll end up doing less DPS, cast before a boss or as needed during a boss battle on the tank. Now at this point before we move on to our last few abilities one thing that I've noticed as playing Sage and now as my main healer is anything below level 90 can be a little difficult in healing if you're not in tune with your abilities. So do not get discouraged if you have a tank die, it doesn't mean you're a bad healer, it just means you need a little more understanding of the job and how it works. I find myself never really letting the tank health drop below 70% when I utilize my abilities correctly as getting a tank back up from critical HP can be a little difficult. It is doable though. With the amount of damage mitigation and utilities we have at our disposal, you'll need to manage multiple cooldowns. I will give you my personal tips at the end of this video for those who want just a little bit more. Haima and Panheima. Now I'm going to talk about these together as they are separate abilities. I didn't realize this for like the first few hours I was playing Sage, but Haima is a single target shield stack and Panheima is a group shield stack but they basically do the same thing. They apply five stacks of shields and when broken, a new one gets applied. If they don't break, then it just turns the remaining stacks into a big heal. Now, primarily when you're at level 80 and you have both of these abilities, you'll want to switch off using these in trash mobs as they're both really effective. So how I use it as the first big pool, I will use Haima. After we kill those adds and then we go on to our second big pool, I use Pan Haima. This will allow a healthy shield on the tank and make it a little less stressful. Rhizomata gives you a stack of Adder's Gall. If the 20 second timer wasn't already great, now we get an extra stack every 90 seconds. This actually comes in handy a lot since you'll be using these OCD job abilities literally all the time. Holos, a group heal and 10% damage mitigation which gives us 3 ways now to keep damage mitigation up at all times. The great thing about this ability is it does stack with Karachal and Torachal. So you can use this if there's super heavy damage coming in. Krasis just increases the healing received by you or a party member. And last but certainly not least is our level 90 ability Numa, which is practically just a damage and healing ability. Now this isn't a DPS gain necessarily, but can be on multiple enemies. So I actually use this most often in trash pulls when the tank has pulled two whole mobs. With that, those are all the abilities explained. Now let's talk about my personal tips and theories that I like to play by. Now I've read multiple articles and websites, especially the Balance Discord, to fully understand the job. And since I'm loving Sage so much, I made it my main healing class now. One of my first practices are the application of 10% mitigation on the tank at almost all times by using Karachal and Torachal. When you first cast Karachal, the mitigation will stay on the tank for 15 seconds. Once the duration has fallen off, I immediately cast Torchal on the tank or vice versa. This allows the tank to have 30 seconds of 10% damage mitigation on each pool. Now I find this to be enough personally, but if you really wanted to, you can throw in Holos to add more mitigation on top or extend the duration another 15 seconds. This specific practice of balancing these two abilities had made healing a ton easier as the tank will have constant damage mitigation not including his own abilities that he casts. The next practice I almost always do is utilizing Zoe for a Eucrasian diagnosis for a bigger heal and shield on the tank. Sometimes that will even proc a critical shield called differential diagnosis, which you're going to be doing pretty great as it seems to shield almost double the tank HP. I never really use Zoe on anything else because we have so many other great abilities to heal the party, but if you need to, you need to. I would just say use your job abilities first. 
The last thing I wanna mention and really hone in on is using your OG cities frequently. Sage is a wonderful, incredible job where so many of its abilities are OG CDs, which means you can weave this into your damage rotation pretty easily. The theory for Sage, in my personal opinion, is to be proactive instead of reactive, as between the damage mitigation, the great healing job abilities, and the shield, OG CDs, Haima, and Pan Haima, I rarely get into a situation where the party's health is low because the cooldowns for Sage are also so incredibly low. At some point, you'll get to the part where you're just damaging so much that you're going to run out of MP because you haven't had to use your job abilities. So just make sure to always at least be using Carachul on cooldown to keep your MP regeneration high. I really hope this all makes sense as Sage can be so confusing at first, but the only way to get good is to just play the job. I hope I can offer some inkling into what Sage has to offer because I personally believe that it is the best well-rounded healing job in the game. With these very basic tools, I hope you can find joy in playing Sage. I want to give a humble thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support in my channel and its content. If you want to support or connect with me on Discord, you can find those links in the description box down below. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.